Hello, everyone. This is Trey Parker. And this is Matt Stone. And welcome to the commentary for season 21 of South Park. If you were looking for the commentary for season 20, you've come to the wrong place. This is the, We are in the future right now, and we are doing season 21. We're going to comment on what we're going to do next year. Yeah. On what we're going to feel about what we're going to do next year after Because season it. 20 was kind of a nightmare. It was probably the hardest season we've ever tried to do, and so we'd, we'd really rather not talk about it. But, uh, <laughs> so we're going to talk about the future season. We're going to talk about what we're going to do next time. But... Uh, <laughs> No, really. Season I, it, 21 was great. It was easy. I felt yeah, really yeah, confident season 21 the whole time. was amazing. We had a great time. <laughs> uh, season 20, however, uh, you know, we were coming off of season 19, which a lot of people liked the fact that it was, we like to call it like serialized light in that we, it was sort of serialized and we kept some threads going, but it, it we never really mapped anything out. And we kind of, you know, we enjoyed that season a lot and we, and other people did. And we thought, well, I wonder what would happen if we really did think it through to begin with. And we learned never to think things through ever again. Um, yeah, thinking things real. through makes things a lot harder on yourself. Um, but uh, <clears throat> what happened is we yeah. we basically had this idea that we'd been kicking around with uh, Vernon Chapman and Bill Hader, who we always work with uh, on the show. And we'd always had this side project, kind of like, you know, Book of Mormon was a side project for many years. We kind of had this side project that we thought we didn't know if it was going to be a movie or a music, what, whatever it would become. We didn't know, but we, we would get together a lot and talk about this idea of a troll, a guy who was a horrible internet troll at night, but during the day was like a totally nice uh, family man who was hiding his identity as a, as an internet troll. And that, you know, we, we came up with all this stuff about how the, you know, the, the Danish, you know, being troll hunters, uh, Somehow there was a troll hunter that got involved in finding this Internet troll. And it was just something that we actually spent a lot of meetings on both in L.A. and New York, kind of like talking through what that idea would be and involving the Danish, involving this troll hunter, involving these other trolls that he gets involved with and everything. And we kind of got to the beginning of, of season 20 of South Park and we said, well, what if we really think this season through a little bit and use this thread that we kind of have an idea for the beginning, middle, end of and thread it through an entire season? And, uh, yeah, no, and it felt yeah. like <clears throat> as we were talking about it, it felt like a subject that was changing before our eyes. You know, we'd talked about it for a couple of years doing something about a troll, and the main kind of <clears throat> part of the script, the main sort of axis of the script is sort of like anonymity versus privacy um, and that, that debate that basically gives in the show, Gerald, his, his, he's so concerned of r retaining his privacy and, and anonymity, but that also gives him his power, which is to be a, just a dick all the time to people, right? Yeah. And so that was the main kind of axis of the script. And, and, uh, and we felt like the world was the, what was what was the, being a troll was starting to change before our eyes. So we decided to go for it and put it in the season. And it was funny because through, through the season, it, the very definition and the very kind of confines of what, what a troll is sort of changed in popular culture. And it felt like that this was the year, and this is not, you know, a super original thought, but that this is the year that the trolls got out of the comment section and into the real world, you know, and it did feel that way. And so there was part of this script that all of a sudden we had to kind of, you know, kind of this idea that we had to kind of follow through. And uh, it's funny because it, you know, that it really is a subject that is like, so we thought it would be a, I don't know, you know what I mean? We didn't think it would change so fast yeah. underneath us. Well, so. because part of the thing was that part of this original thing we had with this troll idea was that there was this guy who was pretty stoked on himself for being a provocateur and, and, and really thought himself as kind of an artist and, and said, you know, I, you know, what I do at night is I go out and I provoke people and I, and I say harsh things and I, and I get people to think by being, you know, really provocative. And, and we started, obviously, at the same time, there was someone who was running for office by being a provocateur. And it just, and we were kind of, we were kind of stuck with the Mr. Garrison thing because the season before in 19, we had, we had done this whole thing making Garrison Trump thinking, oh, that's our Trump show and we won't ever have to do it again. And we started this season going, oh, fuck, Garrison can't just come back and be teacher because now he really is running. You know, he really is in the in the final thing. And so um, but then we really started realizing that the parallel between this troll story we had 
of this guy who's gaining all this momentum in this fan base by being a provocateur while this other guy was doing it. And it and it just seemed like a it could be a really interesting, you know, tale of two of two people. Yeah. And then the other thing, it <clears throat> it definitely was another big idea we came in with is the fact that that guy was running against a woman and that that also lined up with trolls being sort of internet trolls being sort of mostly do, the domain of men being dicks you know being dicks to women although that's not exclusively that that's a very gendered dynamic and you have the the presidential election being gendered dynamic and that's really we got went into the season really thinking it would be a big boys versus girls and kind of play out a uh the little boys and little girls at our school who are now growing up in this world and almost learning that in, 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 in a weird way, kind of on both sides of the political aisle, that men and women are, are at odds with each other. You know what I mean? And, and they're kind of learning that and having to work that out on a little kid level, which is where, like, Wieners Out came, that, that show where it finally felt like we'd earned our way to where the boys had started this little boys' resistance um, because that's what they learned from listening to the men. Um, and that definitely, that definitely, and then that came, you know, Part of the, the thing that Cartman always says, and part of that joke came from this New York Times review of the Ghostbusters movie, because in that whole man versus woman thing, even though it's the smallest, smallest issue in the world, it kind of dovetailed with what we always like to talk about as movies. And so we had this J.J. Abrams joke, and then we, uh, the New York Times review of the new Ghostbusters movie, which is the girls' version of the, the remake, was like, uh, the headline girls was... rule, women's, women are funny, girls rule, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> And it was like the whole, the whole, like we could just see the whole tear in the fabric between men and women was yeah. held in that headline where you have, here's a shitty, here's a bunch of super talented people, men and women, and here's this great franchise. And 2016 is about taking that together, putting yeah. it together in a shitty way. And then if you say that's a shitty movie, you get called a sexist. And yeah. it's like, there we are. That's where we're at. It's we're making shitty fucking clubs. movies. Yeah. And now you're a sexist for yeah. telling, for being... If just you dare say it's a true. shitty movie, then yeah, you're a sexist. <laughs> so just like so you're in this unwinnable situation, and it just is kind of contributed with the same, you know, the really big kind of overall arc that we came in with after putting all this together was kind of a theory of American decadence and that America's lost, which, and this is before the election, this was a really big hard thing for us to get our heads around because that's not what we have thought for 20 years and that's that's a real uh negative pessimistic attitude which felt very kind of like uncomfortable um because this is not trey or I, I mean we just don't like starting things that way and it feels really grumpy and cranky and maybe not funny but it was true you know what i mean and it and it and it like if i mean it felt that way so i said well we, we just said let's you know follow that we can still have fun and stuff but that idea that america's lost its way and the way you can in, in a deep way, America's lost its way. And you can really see how America's lost its way in its response to the new Star Wars movies and in its response to the new Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really stupid, but it made sense to us that yeah. somehow J.J. Abrams and this sort of laziness is also responsible for Trump, you know, that yeah. same laziness of thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is so, which is like so fun. It's such a small little mountain to try to climb up and plant a flag on that's what we loved about it it's just like that's our point damn it yeah you know yeah. <laughs> but it really was we were supposed to you know there was supposed to be really more about the the boys and the girls and their inner school struggle we were mapping all that mm -hmm. out and then the trump thing just kept going and kept going and it was sort of like this microcosm of how a lot of people felt where it's like Okay, can this just go away now so we can get back to our fucking story? But Trump just kept taking taking over everything, and we had to sort of like move with it. We, you know, we we were hoping that by November it was going to be all about Garrison coming back to try to be a teacher again, you know, and and uh, right, and having and, to make amends for being such a dick. Yeah, and and you coming know? back yeah. to this school that was divided by boys and girls, and he realized he was part of it. Right. And and that was really the we're like oh that's so cool that's so cool and then Trump fucked it all up, so yeah, yeah he it, fucked it all up yeah. by winning, yeah and that was tough that so the whole the whole season you can definitely you can definitely feel it wobble at at the mid at the whatever the election night was because we had a complete other story uh, mapped out and it wasn't just the jokes and the lines and stuff it was kind of the deep tectonic sort of like you know things that were informing. The attitudes informing the um, 
you know, the jokes. So then it kind of wobbles. And then we had to keep on this story that we had, this troll story that was going, you know, and, and yeah. we had to keep with a certain tone. And so it was tough. Uh, it was a tough third, basically a third act of this whole big season and, and eighth, ninth, and tenth episode. They were tough to yeah, dial in. It was always, you know, you know part, of, part of the, you know, really the only fun day on South Park is Thursdays where we, <laughs> we come in and we, we know we have a short day and we can go home soon, but we, we sit in the room in the morning and go, all right, let's just forget all that. Now what do we do? You know, and, and obviously this whole season, there was never any forget all that. It was just, okay, where are we? Where, where, what, do we what do we need to get to? And uh, while it was totally interesting, and I think we learned a lot from it, you know, it, it, uh, like I said, it was, it was definitely really hard. Yeah, it was a tough season. Just to keep the, it was the tone thing that I guess we noticed last. Was, yeah, but I will say to too, what, episode, yeah. you know, what's funny is is when it when it got when when we were wrong on on you know and Clinton lost and we were sitting there on Tuesday night with a show and going oh fuck like sh- Trump's gonna win this like our show's wrong and people were, you know there's a lot of people going aha South Park you fell on your face you know you made this prediction and it's like look we've been we've been through what four elections. Yeah. And we've been through four elections and we've had four Tuesday nights where we were we had to call the election before. And we always did it the same way. We looked at the Vegas odds because Vegas is never wrong. And so, like, you, the guys that are spending the real money, you, all you got to do is go to Vegas and see what they're doing. So when we were doing it with Obama, when we were doing it, whatever it was, we always just said, well, what does Vegas say? And if Vegas was saying it's, you know, six to one, we're like, fuck it, let's do the show. I'm, I'll put money on that. And so Vegas was saying, you know, like eight, it was, well, it started off like 20 to one. And then as the week mm-hmm. was going, it, it got a little shorter, but it was still saying like 10 to one by, and I'm like, well, we can bank on those odds. And, uh, mm-hmm. and Vegas was wrong. Vegas yeah. can, Vegas, Vegas can down. cheat you once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Let, be aware. Vegas can let you down <laughs> and take that as a lesson. <laughs> it's not all it says it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's season twenty. I yeah. guess it was also we're, interesting, we're, you know. Uh, I mean, there's a, you know, there's obviously a lot as we were going in this, but uh, w- one fun thing was that uh, my daughter got to be Ike. This oh season. yeah, that's right. And um, she did some cussing. Yeah, she did a lot of cussing, and it sort of like slowly. It was first she came in and had one line where she said like "damn it" or something, and. My wife's just kind of like, okay, okay, and then it was like every every week we'd bring her in, and it would just get worse and worse, and then it became the joke that Ike, yeah. you know, was and it was supposed to, you know, it was in it was in, in the in the idea of the show that, Jer, you know, Ike's dad, who has become this horrible, you know, provocateur, potty mouth person, was obviously spreading it to his little his little son, and uh, but um, but it was really funny because uh, one of the first. Ike's we had one of one of the first Ike's was actually one of our producers Frank Agnoni's daughter and she's now in college <laughs> so it's like it's crazy that like yeah. you know that now there's there's you know it's been that long that basically the the Ike yeah. you know was is now uh, doing well in college so it's just pretty crazy yeah that's pretty crazy yeah but you know it, it really is um what what we're I, I, and I think you know I think again even with us as we were going to the season we were kind of getting at what we were saying, which was so much more about how like watching watching someone justify what they do being a provocateur, right. and how that relates to us you know and that's what mm-hmm. we were really trying to get to at the end was you know us trying to justify no 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 you know we can we can say all this horrible shit because we're provocateurs and we're doing it for art. You know, and then and then slowly watching someone gain momentum and and a fan base by being a provocateur as a politician. And and that's really what we meant. You know, later lately we've been we've been joking in the in the press that, uh, you know, there's just no you can't make we're not going to make fun of Trump because you can't do it because it's a provocateur making fun of a provocateur. And it's like it's supposed to be the provocateurs are the ones, you know, on the on the fringe and on the side going yeah, but hey, what about this? And everyone's going, all right, guys, shut up. You're assholes. And now that person is president. <laughs> so it's just like, it really is more a joke about like, just how hard that is, you know, how hard right. it is to be a provocateur ripping on a provocateur. And then that's yeah, why in the season, it was interesting that we had a troll provocateur, the Trump provocateur, and us as provocateurs. And we're trying to talk about all the same idea towards the end. Yeah, we thought it was important at the beginning of the season. We t- talked about that of where we lie on the spectrum 
of, <clears throat> you know, like a, a being just saying like a racist joke. If Cartman says a racist joke, where does that lie in the spectrum of then like someone, some of these Internet celebrities who are just exist to piss people off and almost celebrities, then they say something. But it's like sort of po- performance art. It's like where does South Park's on that spectrum? And then there's Dice Clay, who's like somewhat of a construction. But then, you know what I mean? He kind of became who he became and then you have somebody like Milo who's like further out and Andy Kaufman and where and then all of a sudden you have somebody who's actually in a suit and tie actually on the ballot and there's a continuum now between those those forces so it was kind of important to us (laughs) at the end of the season to just say no we're professionals leave that shit to us you know what I mean we you know it's like yeah god damn it we're funny and this is not funny you know but it's 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 sort of uh, it's it's we don't we we kind of throw up our hands and go I we don't know it's just there is a difference so we're kind of begging mercy of everyone to go there's a difference between doing something within a frame and a context of something that's art you know and well, it's also like people people at some reporters reporters would ask that question of like you know you guys provoke and you say you know you get a you say provocative things to get a big reaction and what's the difference between you and Trump and now we're like he's the president. <laughs> like that's for, that's it. He's looking for you don't actual need to go, power. Yeah, over he's people, actually you know? trying to change policy, <laughs> and uh, so it was, it's just pretty funny. And you know, and that that when it sort of got around that it's like, oh, they're not. That got twisted into, oh, they're they're not going to make fun of Trump. Like they're going to back off of him. That's that's fucked up. And it's like we, we're not like we 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 actually said almost everything we wanted to say about Trump in season nineteen in in the yeah. episode. That was that like season turned out to be pretty prescient. That yeah, season. and it's like that, I don't know how episode. much further we could go than Trump fucking himself to death and like you know <laughs> raping himself and and it's like you know the then we you know we thought it was it was an interesting new way to look at it and talking about that part of it the provo- the provocative part about it of of a of Trump versus a troll versus us you know and that's really what the the season was about and it's like you know but like I said there's just there's not a whole lot more to make fun of. I mean, yeah, there'll be daily things, obviously, we'll fig- on late night talk shows. But we'll figure out. We'll figure out yeah. something. I yeah. think you know, we kind of we were really glad, just to be honest. Like we knew that after the after the election, we were already so tired, and we had to figure out the end of the season. The last three episodes, as, as we said at the very beginning of the recording, that it was like definitely the hardest season physically and just mentally to figure out how to make this stuff funny. And some of the choices we made, we had to stick with, and you know, all that was. I don't know. That was just that was really tough. But we were really glad that I, I we could see even at that time. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm glad we are off the air for a little bit, um, because you know for a few months, and then we'll come back in August and we'll be able to say something. And 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 mostly, I was just glad because what we're what we're supposed to do and what we try to do is come up with something that's a little more high level or kick it upstairs from the daily or even the weekly bullshit, which with uh, Trump is really hard to do. And I could tell that we needed time to be able to think and, you know, like we don't have anything smart to say, you know what I mean? We were kind of like, okay, we got to go take a break and be able to look at this before we can say something smart. And and I, I admire and uh, I'm not at all envious of like comedy people who have to be on the air right now, you know what I mean? Processing this yeah. in real time because it's a pretty frothy, frothy time, you know? Yeah. I mean, it would be fun on the way, but, but um, our, for our job, I thought it was like, Oh my gosh, we need yeah. a break. No, we needed a break. <laughs> we and need it was, a break. You know, we, it just landed in a. We thought it was landing in a perfect time, and it actually landed in a time where everyone's brain was getting fried, and it was like hard to do weekly <laughs> live art at the time. But, but um, you know, and then we, now we're just thinking, looking forward to season twenty-one as we meant to do from the beginning. Um, you know, it's yes. already hard to be like, dude, where's the world going to be? Like, what's going to be going on? And I don't. I th- I think I can agree with a lot of fans. Where I'm just excited to get back to a lot of Osimo and Christmas critters. Um, that's that's what uh, I'm looking forward to. <laughs> that's what we talk about in season. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> yep. that's what season 21 is about. Yep. And you can check that against. The, we'll check that against the record. Yeah, it'll be season season 21 episode one. Osimo versus the Christmas critters. <laughs> <laughs> poop, pooping on, poop pooping on each other's dick. Pooping on, <laughs> each, on each other's dicks. Yeah. Hey, poop on your dick. So anyway, thank you for listening to our commentary. All right. And um, thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye.